Uh, how's it going, everyone? Nico Phoenix here. Today we're gonna talk about Star Girl Season Three, Episode One, titled "Frenemies Chapter One: The Murder." Oh boy, we actually could talk about it. Unlike Season Two, where they have like proper, like singular episode titles, as opposed to Summer School One to whatever the final episode was. It, it, what, whatever. Anyway, Season Two was just a Clipso arc, craziness, whatever. Who cares? All right, um, this episode covers a Starman coming back, and, um, uh, yeah, Starman's back, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, the Crocs are their neighbors, the Shade is living in Blue Valley, um, and the Gambler returns. Uh, first things first. The Gambler pays a visit to... Uh, this is going to be, like, kind of, sort of, out of order. Obviously, um... NHD brain go burr. Uh, uh, there's also me trying to get m m my second camera to work, but whatever. Anyway, um... I'm gonna cover bits. I'm gonna cover them in in, uh, in, in stages, as we know. Uh, just and like, I guess least relevant to most relevant. Anyway, uh, or it's more like least cringy to most cringy. <laughs> Realistically, um, they're all pretty fucking relevant. Anyway, so the gambler pays Courtney and Pat a visit. Uh, after they come home and Starman is being weird. Anyway, um, so the gambler pays a visit and reveals that he has a daughter uh, named Rebecca. Or he calls her Becky, but whatever. Um, anyway, um... He comes in and it's just like, look, I want to turn over a new leaf, like the Crocs and the Shade and whatnot. And uh, obviously they're like, mm, it's like, hey, the, the, look, you don't get that chance like everyone else. They actually helped with the clip so. <sighs> why should we care? Like, why, why should we give you that second chance? And obviously he reveals he has a daughter and he flinches when asked uh, about it because apparently his dad was not around um now of course it's hit this hits home with courtney um because the gambler is doing better than her own dad did because he actually wants to be involved just doesn't feel that he's worthy of being involved it's this whole thing the gambler then pays the shade a visit and Seemingly to apologize, now the shade just goes, go. Like his eyes go like full black, and he's like, go. And um, it's, it, it it's like this weird like green dot dots that it's like the still force almost. That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the still force particles. Uh, when he like pulls out like the like the shadows from his eyes and whatnot. It, it, it's 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 like it like dissipates, and then there's like. Some like what looks like still force particles. I don't know how to describe it beyond still force particles because that's what it looks like. It looks like the still force particles from when uh, Dion like teleports and whatnot. But anyway. Um. <clears throat> Now, the gambler goes to his trailer, and he does throw a gun into the uh, trash can. Um, more on that later. Uh, time for... Uh, okay. Paula Croc, who I'm still not used to seeing her being able to walk. Uh, usually, by the time we see Paula Croc on screen, she's in a wheelchair. And her husband's gone off the deep end. Right? Uh, but... I mean, hey, I guess we don't get Jade uh, this time. Uh, 
Anyway, she visits Barbara and is like, look, my my daughter wants to join the JSA. She, she's like very, str she's struggling to say my daughter wants to join the JSA. I don't, we don't get, I don't, we don't actually have a reason for why um, Artemis wants to join the JSA. Like, at all. She's a bit much, uh, just in attitude, but she apparently wants to join the JSA. Hey, more power to her. Barbara's response is, it's not up to me, it's up to them, right? And she's just like, <laughs> like, she's kind of afraid of Paula. And Paula's being, like, hella intimidating, too. You know, for a woman who I'm normally used to seeing in a wheelchair with the inability to walk, she's fucking intimidating as shit. Although maybe that's just the actor playing, just being really, really good. <sighs> Uh, now we're in school. Um, the new... Uh, Yvette Monreal's character. I forget what her name is. I, I actually should look it up. Hold on. Um, Stargirl. Uh, Stargirl. Cast. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. Yolanda. Okay. Yolanda. She's being really... Um, Oh, I, f uh, I should probably mention because this happens beforehand. Uh, apparently, um... Oh, fuck's sake. The new Hour Man. Bro, I just can't find it at all. The new hour man whose name I actually just Rick Tyler. Okay, thank you. Rick uh has been trying to resurrect Grundy. As uh for those of you who watch season two, no. Uh Grundy turned over a new leaf. And Rick gave Grundy forgiveness, which is really, oh, which, which, uh, hold on a second. Now, Yolanda and Rick are like, nah, no second chances for Cindy and Artemis. Weirdly enough. Because Artemis stops by and is like, go team, and then walks away. Um, well, Cindy's at the table. Um, Yolanda's just like, nah, fuck everybody. Fuck all of them trying to uh, get a second chance. No second chances, which is cringe as fuck, by the way. You're supposed to be one of the good guys. Right, like, you're supposed to be one of the good guys. Second chances is par, par for the course on the good guys. Like, come on. And then Rick, the guy who gave Grundy, the, 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 the swamp monster that killed both his parents, a second chance is like, nah, no second chances for Sydney or Artemis. Why? They're all being, like, hella cringe. And I don't like describing things as cringe, but that's just... That's literally my reaction to them this episode. It's just like... Bleh. It's literally just me cringing. Uh, ugh, I really need to get my camera working. Um, anyway, um... They're all being, like, really cringy about it and whatnot. Anyway, um... So, Starman, um, Starman, Starman, Starman. Oh, Artemis' dad, um, whose name I forget and I can't be, uh, I can't be asked to go check, um, breaks into the house and builds, uh, at five in the morning and builds, um, and makes Pat a smoothie. Yeah, that's, that, that's a thing. Anyway, moving on from that. Starman is being, um, very, very weird. Anyway, um, Pat shows him the stripe mech, and, um, he's like, let's go fly in it. I'll go get the staff so that I can keep up. Suspicious. Anyway, they go, they save a plane because, uh, Pat apparently scared the pilot. Um, so they go and save a, pl uh, save a plane that they... Yeah, it's their fault the plane was in any danger. Um, now, of course, Starman and Pat get in trouble with Barbara and the kids because Starman has the staff. Anyway, um, 
Starman admits that he actually did come for the staff uh, originally because he thought the staff was just, you know, in a crate somewhere. Uh... <laughs> oh boy, everyone's in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Courtney uh, meets Starman halfway. Because Courtney is actually a decent person. Now. Which is weird. But okay. I, I, look, I, I had troubles with Courtney and her attitude in the beginning of Stargirl. She, uh, clearly by me saying she's a decent person now. She has improved by leaps and bounds and is now the proverbial hero, as it were. At least in my eyes, right? You know, let's go. Go, Courtney. Woo. Anyway. So, there is now trouble, and, uh, oh god, I just had the worst nightmare last night. They did, like, a bad, like, remake of, of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker on the Switch for this year's Zelda game, and I'm, I'm like, terrified right now. Of that happening. I just want uh, Twilight Princess and uh, Wind Waker HD on Switch. So I don't have to get a Wii U. Anyway, that's not a topic for this channel. It's a topic for the gaming channel. Link in the description. Uh, but yeah, there is trouble. The new um, Dr. Midnight. Has said that there is trouble. I forgot her name. And I just saw it. I'm not going to click on it. It's Beth. <laughs> that's why I'm not going to click on it. I, I just I know my brain's going to connect the dots eventually. Um, so Beth calls, there's trouble. They bring Cindy, Cindy with them. Um, now, they find out that uh, the people that are doing the robbery, uh, which they didn't even get to stop because Artemis comes in, beats up all of the bad guys, and then shouts, how's that for an audition? And, like, runs away, which is really weird. Anyway, um, they go back to base, and Cindy's like, yeah, this is boring, whatever, I'm leaving. And then they decide, you know what, since they're related to the gambler, let's go confront the gambler. Um, Cordy's like the only one who's like, no, we're here to talk, not to beat his ass. As they're heading towards the gambler's base, they're being like extra cautious and shit, which is funny. Uh, the gambler uh, discovers that there's feeds of all of the JSA and reformed criminals. I put reformed in quotes because we don't know they're reformed yet, except for the Shade, who apparently was never a criminal, as we know from season two. The man, like, saved Dr. Midnight. Like, the original Dr. Midnight. And nearly died trying to get him back. So, you know, it's all good. Now, he might be a little self-serving, but that's human nature. And he was trying to teach a woman how to make proper tea as well at a cafe, which was funny. Um, anyway. So he goes to the, trash, uh, to, the, uh, to the trash bin and picks up a gun. He goes outside to remove the camera and psh, the camera feed cuts out, turns into static. Then we hear a gunshot. Uh, lo and behold, we see Cindy getting up from off the body with a gun in her hand saying, I didn't do this. And that's when the episode ends. <laughs> Look, I'm choosing to believe Cindy right now because Cindy at the beginning of the episode went and helped an old lady carry her groceries and, you know, walk her to her home when she saw that the woman was, you know, struggling on a cane. Right? Someone who rolls their eyes but then goes and helps the person, you know, is clearly trying to turn over a new leaf. They just, like, I can't believe I'm doing this, right? Like, right? There's still, like, a, that little bit of villain, villainous in her. Um, But, like, she's at least trying to turn over a new leaf. Which is more than I can say for some. Um, <coughs> well, support. Sorry. Sorry. I, I had to. I I swear, if Stargirl Season 3 gives us the, the the redemption arc on everybody, obviously except for the gambler who is, rest in peace, uh, we don't actually know he's dead. I mean, the title is the murder, so I'm guessing he's dead by the title. 
but, but, but uh, we don't actually know that he's dead yet. Um, that'll be confirmed next episode, probably. Anyway, um, obviously that's the end of the episode, and it. I swear, if Stargirl gives us the redemption arc for all of the villains, uh, except for the Gabbler, if he does end up indeed being dead, where we couldn't get a redemption arc for Alice in three seasons, and they do it in one season for a bunch of them, I'm going to be pissed. I'll be very happy they got the redemption arc, because you know me, I'm all about them second chances. Oh yeah, and uh, Pat and... What's his name? toast to second chances where Starman's like listing off everybody that is being given a second chance. Well, whatever. Starman is meh. I don't like him. I don't trust him. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one who killed um the gambler. But yeah, if they give everyone a second chance this season and we still didn't get it in three seasons for Alice, I'm going to be fucking pissed. But then again, the Batwoman writers apparently love torturing Alice for no reason. She very well should have been, like, redemption arced in Season 2. But of course, they had to write off Kate and then not write her off, which was... I'm just like, wait, why, why write her off uh, killing her in the first episode to bring in Ryan Wilder? Which, Ryan Wilder was great. Only to then bring back Kate Kane. And mind fuckery hurt, but it was just season two was all kinds of chaotic in Batwoman. Anyway, I mean it was chaotic in this one in Stargirl too. Anyway, that's the episode and a little bit of my rambling. Um, I'm hoping Starman is the killer. Um, unfortunately, I I think Cindy's gonna go to prison for it. Um. <sighs> this is not going to end well for Cindy. Um, she may have to turn full villain again, uh, which sucks. But hey, uh, tell me what you guys thought of the episode down in the comment section down below. That's going to be for this video. If you guys haven't already, hit like, hit subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay bright. We can finally cover Stargirl again. Let's go.